The next topic is a female reproductive system. So a female reproductive system, just like male, it has uh, internal and external uh, female reproductive organs. Uh, okay, yes. And so internal female reproductive organs, they are ovaries, uterine tubes, uterus, and vagina. And also there are vestigial organs, like appendages of the ovary. They are located inside the broad ligament. Uh, they are apiophoran and periophoran. Good morning. So they are vestigial, they do not perform any function, but uh, in, case, in some cases they get enlarged and they can form cysts. Okay. So, uh, and, okay, we'll start with internal, yes. So first we'll start with ovaries. Ovary, in Latin it is ovarium, in Greek ophoran, like testes in meals, uh, it is gland of mixed secretion. So it performs endocrine and exocrine functions. As exocrine gland, it produces female sex cells, ovum, yes, oocytes. As a male, oh sorry, what did I say? As endocrine gland, it produces female sex hormones. But if in males, they are always the same with the androgens and the main of them is testosterone, yes. In females, um, there are two uh, hormones, uh, estrogens and progesterone and their production varies uh, on the day of menstrual cycle we'll talk about it later about menstrual cycle so progesterone and estrogens so that is these are the main functions of ovaries what is anatomic position this is uterus this is urinary bladder so uh, ovaries they are attached to posterior layer of broad ligament so they are located posteriorly. So that's why this is anatomic position. If patient is lies on the back, if he is, she is supine, then this is anatomic position. Here they must be head of the patient. Mm -hmm. So just like in the testes, ovaries, they have two surfaces, medial surface, facies medialis, and lateral surface, facies lateralis. Ah, yes, what I forgot, I didn't tell you about the topography. So ovaries are located inside the pelvic cavity, yes, and uh, the um, syntopy above the ovaries, there are uterine tubes, medially from the ovaries, mm -hmm. there is uterus, yadratvity, yeah, behind there is rectum, mm, that's it. Um, Mm -hmm. And uh, if to put it correctly into anatomic position, then uterine tubes, they are not facing exactly laterally. They are facing posterolaterally, like this. And that's why this, um, this surface of the ovary is medial. And that, that uh, is attached to the ovarian fossa of the broad ligament. Broad ligament is a double layer of peritoneum that continues laterally from the uterus. So that surface that faces ovarian fossa of the broad ligament, this is a lateral surface of the ovary. Also, ovary has two borders. Uh, inferior border, it is free border, Marga Libera. Superior border is named Mesovarian border, Marga Mesovarica. Why is it named Mesovarian border? Actually, ovary, we have already said about it, is not covered by peritoneum, yes? We were saying when we studied peritoneum that ovary is the only organ uh, that is located inside the peritoneal cavity. Why? Because if it would be covered by peritoneum, you know that every month, <laughs> like during ovulation, when ovum gets mature, uh, this follicle where, ovary, where ovum grows, it gets ruptured. And ovum should go out from the ovary and it should be captured by uterine tubes to enter um, uterine cavity. If ovary would be covered by peritoneum, then ovum wouldn't be able to go out. Ovum would, after the ovulation, it would just get stuck between peritoneum and the uh, parenchyma of the ovary. So that's why here, from all the sides, ovaries are covered by the special embryonic epithelium. One layer, single layer, embryonic epithelium. And only at the hilum of the ovary, here at the mesovarian border, there is, there is hilum of the ovary, two layers of the broad ligament, they are attached like from different sides, from both sides of the hilum. So, and this mesovarium is like a mesentery, like mesocolon, double layer of peritoneum that serves for the attachment of the ovary. But from all the other sides, ovaries are not covered by peritoneum. Okay, uh, what else? And there are two ends or poles. Uh, that end, 
that is directed towards the uterus. It is uterine and extremitus uterina, uterina, and that then that goes laterally. It is tubulent, extremitus tubaria. So two surfaces, two borders, two uh, ends, two poles. Okay, this is external structure. If we look at the internal structure of the ovary. Mm. I cannot see it here. No, what here we can see it, yes. Not quite clear, but still. Uh, then we will see that in, in the it is parenchymous organ, and in the parenchyme of the ovary, uh, there is central part that is named medulla, uh, into medulla through the hilum, uh, vessels and nerves enter for nourishment of the ovary. And there is a peripheral part that is named cortex of the ovary. In the cortex of the ovary, we can see, not quite clearly, but under the microscope we can see it clearly, follicles and corpus luteum at the different stages of their development. So uh, I think you learned it at school, yes? that first, at the beginning of menstrual cycle, follicle starts to grow, and inside the follicle, ovum is formed, yes? And after ovum goes out from the follicle, follicle uh, gets transformed into corpus luteum, yes, corpus luteum, that produces progesterone. And if pregnancy comes, then this corpus luteum becomes corpus luteum of pregnancy. If pregnancy doesn't come, then corpus luteum gets transformed into corpus albicans, yes, just white body that no, it's just a scar. Yes, just a scar. Just a connective tissue. So that is... Um, About the ovary. Yes, internal structure. Yeah. Ah. What I forgot to tell you, you should know about fixation apparatus of the ovary. So one thing, it is mesoverium, we have already said. Uh, the other, from the uterine end of the ovary to the uterus, proper ovarian ligament goes, ligamentum ovarii propria. And from the tubal end of the ovary to the lateral pelvic wall, suspensory ovarian ligament goes, uh, ligamentum suspensorium ovarii. So these are three ligaments, three structures, two ligaments and mesoverium, which we have to dissect in case if we need to remove ovary. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so ovaries appeared open, so yes, there is right and left. The next is uterine tube, tuba uterina. Here they are, tuba uterina. In Latin, in Greek, it is salpinx. So uh, they are also internal female reproductive organs. What did you lose? I think I lost the name of it. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So, um, yes, internal female reproductive organ, uh, and it performs the following functions. Uh, first of all, uh, delivery of the ovum towards the uterine cavity, transport of the ovum to the uterine cavity, and also fertilization can take place here in ampulla usually. And if fertilization occurred, then zygote that is formed after the fertilization, yet after sperm cell is fertilized, or vice versa, ovum is fertilized by sperm cell, uh, then zygote is formed, yes, and zygote is also immobile. And transport of the zygote towards the uterine cavity, it is also one of the functions of uterine tubes. So these three functions. Uh, the uh, uterine tubes are also located at the pelvic cavity, laterally from the uterus, uh, above the ovaries, and uh, laterally from the uterine tubes there is lateral pelvic wall. So here we can see it. It is hollow organ and it has several parts. Mm, if we start from the lateral uh, side, the first part will be infundibulum, this is infundibulum, then it will be um, ampulla, then isthmus, the narrowest part, and then intramural part that passes through the wall of the uterus. So infundibulum. Infundibulum is formed by numerous fimbria, these hair-like structures, here we can see them. They are fimbria. The longest fimbria is named ovarian fimbria, fimbria avarica, this one, and it is attached to the tubal end of the ovary. So this fimbria they uh, all the time move, yes, and they try to catch the ovum. Because what is the difference between male sex cells and female sex cells? The main di main difference is that male yeah. sex cells, yes, More they are mobile, different. yes, and female sex cells, they are immobile. And so after um, ovulation, uh, yes, fimbria of uterine tube, they should catch the ovum to put it, to push it into the uh, lumen of uterine tube. So that's it. These are fimbria. Uh, then the next part it is ampulla, I told you, yes, white part, then isthmus, 
and then intramural part. If we talk about internal structure, then it is hollow organ, yes, and it has mucus membrane. The innermost layer is mucosa. <coughs> Mucosa of the uterine tube is covered by ciliated epithelium because they are immobile, yes, this ovum, and they vibrate towards the uh, uterine cavity, lumen of the uterine cavity. Also, uh, so there are several mechanisms which provide movement of the ovum and zygote towards the uterine cavity. First, these are fimbria. Then the second, the ciliated epithelium. Also, we should say that in the mucosa of the uterine cavity, uh, of the uterine tube, there are special cells, mucus cells, which produce mucus. And this mucus, like it lubricates the lumen of uterine tube, yes? And ovum, it slides along the uterine tube uh, towards the uterine cavity. So this is the third one. Then under the mucosa, there is some mucosa, which... Uh, contributes to formation of folds. Then there is muscular layer. Muscular layer uh, consists of two layers of muscles, internal is circular and external one is longitudinal. And just like in the digestive tract, this muscular layer, it is able for peristalsis. So this is force mechanism, this peristalsis. Uh, they contract this muscular cells of the muscular layer of uterine tube. And they also push uh, ovum or zygote towards the uterine cavity. Yes. And so from outside, uterine tube is covered by peritoneum uh, of broad ligament. Uh, uterine tube is intraperitoneal organ. Yes, intraperitoneal organ. And it has also mesocelpings. Mesocelpings is located below the uh, uterine tube. Here, uh, it is also formed by the broad ligament. That's it. So, fixation apparatus of the uterine tube is presented by the mesocelpings. When we need to remove uterine tube due to some pathology, for example, ectopic pregnancy, yes? So, if fertilization occurred, but ovum or zygote didn't reach uterine cavity, then implantation can take place in the uterine tube, yes? But embryo and fetus cannot grow in the uterine tube because uh, it does not make that much stretchable. And finally, it will blast yes, when embryo is big enough. Or if we detect it in time by ultrasound, for example, like we will have to remove this tube. And in this case, we have to dissect mesocelpings, and also we have to dissect this uh, between isthmus and intramural part of the uterine tube and remove such uterine tube. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. And it is also paired organ, I told you. Then uterus. Uterus, in Latin it is uter, uterus, and in Greek it is metra or hystera. So there are two Greek names, metro and hystera. Uh, mm -hmm. So it is also internal female reproductive organ. It is um, It performs function of uh, development of embryo and fetus. It also participates in uh, childbirth, yes, because it has very well developed muscular layer. And without the pregnancy, it participates in menstrual cycle. So endometrium every month it gets uh, disrupted. Yes, dis uh, separated. Okay. Yes, uh, and uh, goes away from the uterine cavity. Okay. So it is, um, uterus is also located in uh, pelvic cavity if there is no pregnancy, but uh, it can in increase um, the size, its sizes, like uterus, 40 times. So at the end of pregnancy, it uh, can it occupies the whole abdominal cavity, and it even reaches xiphoid process of sternum. So uh, there is no any other organ in human body that can be enlarged uh, that much significantly, yes? Okay, so uh, laterally from the uterus, uh, there are appendages of uterus, which are uterine tubes and ovaries, yes. In front of the uterus, uh, there is urinary bladder. Behind the uterus, there is um, rectum. So this is urinary bladder, this is uterus, this is rectum. And that's what we have already said when we studied peritoneum, that between uh, posterior wall of urinary bladder and anterior wall of uterus, uh, there is uterine pouch. Vesica uterine pouch. Vesica yes, vesica uterine pouch. And between posterior wall of uterus and anterior wall of rectum, yes, there is recta uterine pouch or Douglas pouch. And Douglas pouch is deeper. Mm -hmm. 
So what else? Uh, we should say about the parts of the uterus. There is fundus of uterus, the uppermost part, then body, corpus, uh, boundary between bo uh, fundus and body passes in the place where uterine tubes enter uterine cavity. Then uh, below the body there is the narrowest part that is isthmus, and below the isthmus there is cervix. Cervix has two parts, two portions. It is vaginal portion, which we can see from the vagina when we perform um, gynecological examination, yes? And supravaginal portion that cannot be uh, seen from the side of the vagina. Why do we distinguish these two parts? Because uh, uterus is mesoperitoneal organ. Uh, it is covered by peritoneum from all the sides. The only part that is not covered by peritoneum, it is vaginal portion of cervix. So here there is no peritoneum. Everywhere from the other sides, there is peritoneum. Okay. Um, we also, in external structure, we have to say about the uh, normal position of uterus. So in normal cases, in majority of cases, uh, fundus of uterus should be directed anteriorly. Such a position is named anteversio, anteversio of uterus. And also angle between body of uterus and cervix should be also opened anteriorly. Such a position is named anteflexio. Anteversio, anteflexio. In some cases, a fundus can be, you know, like in case of adhesions, or sometimes it is innate, uh, fundus can be directed posteriorly. An angle between body and cervix also can be opened posteriorly. For example, in this preparation, we can see it, yes? So this is, I told you, urinary bladder. But we see that fundus of uterus is, goes uh, like it's directed post towards, post towards the rectum, yes, posteriorly. So this is retroversio. And also angle between body and cervix is open posteriorly. So it is retroversio, retroflexio. That's it. So when we look, when we look uh, at the internal structure, first of all, we should say that cavity of uterus, non-pregnant uterus, has is triangular in shape. Triangular in shape. And uh, walls of the uterus consist of three layers. Um, the innermost layer, it is uh, mucous layer, but here it has a special name. It is endometrium, endometrium. Then there is muscular layer. It is named myometrium, yes. And the outermost layer that is formed by uh, peritoneum, it is perimetrium, yes. Endometrium uh, has two layers. Uh, there is basal layer, which always stays in the uterine cavity, even after the menopause, so after menstrual cycle is over, yes, after 50. Uh, and there is functional layer. Functional layer grows uh, during every menstrual cycle, and at the end, it gets separated. So that is functional layer. Okay, uh, muscular layer, myometrium, consists of three layers. Mm, inner and outer, it is longitudinal, and middle circular. And from outside, it is perimetrium, peritoneum. We also have to know that um, at the margins of uterus, the right, uh, right and left margins, lateral margins, between perimetrium and myometrium, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. here, yes, there is uh, adipose tissue uh, through which vessels and nerves pass. This adipose tissue is named parametrium. Parametrium. Mm -hmm. I also have to tell you about fixation apparatus of uterus. It is very important because when we need to remove uterus, we have to dissect all of these ligaments. And also, uh, with an age and also after numerous uh, childbirths, these ligaments can become weak and um, such a woman can suffer from prolapse or like prolapse of pelvic organs, like uterus can descend to the vagina and even outside of the vagina, sometimes it happens. It is due to the weakness of these ligaments. So first of all, it is a broad ligament. So uh, I told you, yes, that peritoneum uh, covers uh, uterus from anteriorly, then fundus, then goes to the posterior wall 
And laterally, uh, these two layers of peritoneum, which cover anterior and posterior wall, they join together and they form broad ligament, broad ligament of the uterus. Between uh, these two layers, uh, uterine tubes are located and some other structures. So first it is broad ligament. The other is round ligament of the uterus, ligamentum teres uteri. So here we can see it. this is what this is uh, uterine tube and this is round ligament of the uterus. Round ligament of the uterus uh, originates from lateral margins of the uterus and it passes also between two layers of broad ligament. It goes anterolaterally and it enters um, inguinal canal. So inguinal canal, you again will have to revise for mm -hmm. the next lesson. So in we have said about it before that in males through inguinal canal spermatic cord passes yes and in females it is round ligament of the uterus. So that's it. It enters the inguinal canal and then it ends in the skin of major pudendal leaves. Uh, the next, it is cardinal ligament. Cardinal ligament of the uterus, it starts from the isthmus, they start the also period, and they move to the lateral pelvic wall. These are cardinal ligaments of the uterus. And also there are uterosacral ligaments, ligamentum sacra uterina. No, we can, this one, this is. Or in some books it's written uh, uterosacral ligament or uterorectal ligaments. So they start from the posterior wall of the uterus and they go backward to the sacrum. So these are sacra they also appear, sacral uterine ligaments. This is fixation apparatus of the uterus. In the cervical canal, uh, mucosa of the uterus is lined with simple columnar epithelium. Mucosa of cervical canal is also lined with simple columnar epithelium. So here in the cervix there is cervical canal and it starts by internal cervical os internal cervical opening and it ends with external cervical os yes external so shape of this uh, opening is different in uh, women who have already had birth and who haven't had birth yes so this woman has given birth so um, yes because this horse it is like fish like yes uh, like fish in women who has never given birth it is ring shaped mm -hmm. okay that was about uterus vagina Okay, so vagina, in Latin it is vagina, and in Greek kolpas, it is also internal female reproductive organ. It serves as an organ of copulation, yes, and also it serves for passage of menstrual blood, for, uh, as a part of birth canal, so fetus also passes through it, mm, that's it. Okay, so here we can see it. Uh, superiorly, uh, there is cervix of the uterus, and inferiorly, uh, boundary between internal and external female reproductive organs is presented by uh, hymen. Mm. So, we do not see it well. It, hymen is present in, uh, no, in, uh, no, in girls who haven't mm, before the first sexual intercourse, yes, and after that, this hymen gets ruptured, and we can see only hymenal caruncles, caruncula hymenalis, like, no remnants of hymen, what is left from it, that's it. So everything that is above, it is, <clears throat> these are internal female reproductive organs, and below, external. So below it, there is vestibule or vagina. So it is hollow organ. Ah, yes, topography I haven't completed. In front of the vagina, uh, in the upper one third, there is fundus of urinary bladder. And in front of middle and lower one third, there is female urethra. This female urethra. Behind, uh, there is rectum. And in the uppermost part, uppermost part, in the fornix, we can say, yes, uh, it communicates with recto uterine pouch or Douglas pouch. So when we suspect presence of any pathological liquid in the peritoneal cavity of woman, we perform diagnostic puncture. Like colpocentesis, this procedure is named. Colpocentesis. We do it through posterior vaginal fornix. What is fornix? So cervix enters, like cervix, like protrudes, yes, into the vagina, and 
around the cervix there is like a depression, like um, the depression, and it is named fornix of vagina. And posteriorly, it is deeper than anteriorly. And so we enter this posterior part of vaginal fornix by the needle, and we get into the rectouterine pouch. And that's how we can detect presence of any uh, liquid in this in the peritoneal cavity. So most part the of liquid the... will be peritoneal fluid. No, it in normal cases yes, there is a small uh, serous fluid, but it can be blood if there is internal bleeding. It can be pus if there is. Mm, purulent, any purulent process, yes? So, largest part of the posterior wall of the vagina faces rectum, and the uppermost, it, it is directed to the rectouterine pouch. So, it is hollow organ, it has two walls, anterior and posterior, and in normal cases, like in, uh, uh, yes, in normal cases, they uh, join together. And what? Uh, yes. The run uh, numerous transverse folds here in vagina, yes, uh, transverse folds, and in the very center, in that part of vagina that corresponds to the urethra, here a urethral crest is formed. Urethral crest on the posterior. What, what am I showing? This is urethral crest, yes, and posteriorly there is also like uh, such a crest, but it's not urethral, like an, uh, just uh, vaginal uh, ridge, but it is located to the right or to the left from the urethral crest for them not to overlap each other, they should be like. Mm, like near each other, not to create a um, gap between anterior and posterior walls. So it is hollow organ, uh, there is mucosa. Mucosa of the vagina is lined with uh, non-keratinized squamous epithelium. Stratified, non-keratinized non stratified squamous epithelium. And I told you, yes, the cervical canal, mucosa of cervical canal is lined with columnar epithelium, just like the mucosa of uterine cavity. And here, somewhere at the region of external uh, cervical opening, these two types of epithelium, um, they meet each other. Yes, this uh, non-keratinized stratified squamous and columnar. And because they meet each other, um, it is very dangerous place where cervical cervical cancer can develop, uh, can be developed. Like it is known as zone of storms, zone of storms. So cervical cancer starts always from this place where these two types of epithelium meet. Okay, uh, mucosa. And yes, in your textbooks, uh, it's written that there is no submucosa in vagina. Actually, it's not like that. There is. A submucosa is well developed because there are numerous transverse folds here, yes? So submucosa is present in the vagina. And then there is muscular layer. That is inner one is circular and outer one is longitudinal. And then there is adventitia. So the only part of vagina that is covered by peritoneum, it is here, this posterior vaginal fornix. And these were internal female reproductive organs. External female reproductive organs. Uh, they are vestibule of vagina, vestibule of vagina, minor pudendal lips, major pudendal lips, clitoris, and also pubis uh, is also written in your book that it is external female reproductive organ. Actually, uh, in sapin it's written. It's not like that. It's just a part region uh, in skin, I, I think. Okay, so vestibule of vagina. Uh, superiorly, I already told you, it is bounded by hymen, yes, and laterally uh, by minor pudendal leaves. So the space between minor pudendal leaves forms genital cleft or genital fissure. So into the um, vestibule of vagina, vagina opens and also female urethra. Uh, what is the difference between male and female urethra? First of all, female urethra is much shorter than male and it is wider, mm -hmm. yes, and that's why inflammatory uh, like diseases of urinary tract are much more common in males, uh, in females mm -hmm. than in males. And also uh, for male urethra it opens to external environment and female urethra opens to um, vestibule of vagina. Ah, yes. The other external female reproductive organs are Batalin's glands, 
uh, or greater vestibular glands. Uh, they are located in the posterior one third of minor pudendal leaves, and they open also to the vestibule of vagina. They excrete reducts. They serve for lubrication during uh, sexual intercourse. And there are also minor vestibular glands. Uh, they perform the same functions, and uh, they also open into the vestibule of vagina. Uh, what else? No, so minor pudendal lips, as well as major pudendal lips, they are skin folds. And minor pudendal lips, anteriorly, they continue and they form two crews, medial and lateral crews, which surround, like, which, uh, surround the clitoris. This is a clitoris. It is like uh, analog of penis in males. It has a head. No, also it has cavernous and spongious body, and then two crews, and crews, they, here we can see, yes, continuation of crews, they are inserted to the pubic symphysis. I think that, yes. Uh, one more thing uh, that you have to study. Mm -hmm. It's of soft tissues uh, that includes skin, tissue, and muscles, which are located at the pelvic outlet. Here it is. So you have to know boundaries of perineum. It is bounded anteriorly by inferior margin of pubic symphysis, posteriorly by uh, apex of coccyx, and laterally by ischial tuberosities. So it is rhomboid in shape. It is in white sense. For obstetricians, for gynecologists, uh, there is a perineum in narrow sense. It is a space between posterior um, margin of genital cleft or posterior mar margin of scrotum in males, yes, up to the anterior margin of an anus. So this is um, perineum in narrow sense. So perineum, this region, can be divided into two triangles. Like if we make a line uh, that passes through two ischial tuberosities, uh, anteriorly there will be urogenital triangle, trigonum urogenitale, and posteriorly there will be anal triangle, trigonum anale. Through anal triangle, in both males and females, an anus passes, and through urogenital triangle, in uh, males, only male urethra passes, and in females, it is vagina and female urethra. Uh, also, all the muscles here in this region, muscles of perineum, they are divided into two diaphragms, urogenital diaphragm and pelvic diaphragm. Uh, in both urogenital and pelvic diaphragms, muscles are divided into two layers, uh, superficial and deep. So superficial, uh, let's start with urogenital diaphragm. So urogenital diaphragm, superficial layer of muscles of urogenital diaphragm is presented by superficial transverse perineal muscle, this is musculus transversus perineus superficialis, that starts from the ischial tuberosity, internal surfaces of ischial tuberosity, and goes to the central tendon of perineum. So all the muscles, here we can see, of the perineum, as they join together here and form central tendon of perineum. Uh, and also there are two more muscles. It is ischial cavernous muscle and bulbous spongious muscle. So you have to know origin, insertion of every muscle. It's written in the book and action. A deep layer of muscles is presented by deep transverse perineal muscle and also external urethral sphincter. So external urethral sphincter is located in the membranous part, yes, uh, around the membranous part of male urethra that passes through the perineum. Uh, pelvic diaphragm also has superficial and deep muscles. Superficial muscles are presented by uh, levator. No. Uh, superficial muscle is presented by external anal sphincter. Yes, external anal sphincter. And internal deep layer of muscles is presented by levator any muscle, musculus levator any. Levator any muscle is a big muscle. It has several parts. There is puba uh, coccygeal part that goes from a pubic bone to the coccyx and ischial coccygeal part and also puborectal part. So this is like very big and its action is to elevate anus during defecation. And just coccygeal muscle, very small, we cannot see it here. No, it goes from the coccyx to the posterior margin uh, of the anus. And uh, all of these muscles are covered by 
fishia, și eu vă and deep superior and inferior fishia of uh, your genital and pelvic diaphragms. How they spread also please read in the book. One more thing that you have to know, here there is ischio-rectal fossa. Fossa ischio-rectalis. It is a paired structure that is located laterally from the uh, rectum. Uh, triangle, like trihedral pyramid, uh, the base is formed by the skin, yes, and anteriorly it is bounded by superficial and deep transverse perineal muscles, uh, medially by levator any muscles, and laterally by internal obturator muscle, internal obturator muscle. And so uh, this um, ischiorectal fossa is filled in with um, fatty tissue, uh, pararectal fatty tissue, or paraproctus. Also here there are vessels and nerves, we'll study it later. And this uh, paraproctus, this fatty tissue, sometimes can get inflammated. Such a disease is named paraproctitis. And this paraproctitis can be complicated by formation of fistula. What is fistula? It is a uh, communication between any of uh, hollow, no, any of species, yes? Like, there will, there will be um, communication with the rectum, and then this path from para ischiorectal fossa will go out with feces, yes, through the rectum. So this is ischiorectal fossa you also have to know. Uh, questions? No, so please take your seats.